You just fired off a transaction on a blockchain, but you may have noticed that there was little extra that was charged, an upcharge, if you will, for processing that transaction. Maybe it was a gas fee on some blockchains or a transaction fee on another blockchain. What was that all about? And where did that money go? That's important to know. It's actually money that you just paid after all. Who got that money? That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to take a look at three different blockchains and see how they handle gas or transaction fees in my first ever video thread. So get ready as we explore how gas is really handled on Bitcoin, Solana, and an up and coming chain, Sweet. Let's go. First up, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. As we see here, I am in the process of just tinkering around, transferring 0.1 Bitcoin. But when I spy down here, that's going to come with a network fee of about $7. That's kind of small font, but there it is. Ultimately, where does this come from? Bitcoin has, we kind of denote small units of Bitcoin in something called SATs. That's really short for Satoshi units that we kind of measure small units of Bitcoin, particularly to measure things like how much gas is being paid. When we think about Bitcoin, 100 million SATs equals one Bitcoin. So when we're trying to measure things like network fees, it's really tricky to say, oh, it's going to be 0.0002538 Bitcoin when typically we would measure that in something like SATs. And using a Bitcoin to SATs calculator, I could really look at this and say my gas fee is going to be, let's see right there, 25,380 SATs. So ultimately, where did my SATs go? Well, they went to the miner who produced the block that contained my transaction. Miners like this one right here, the latest generation of Bitcoin miners are Antminer S19 XPs. They cost $4,600 today and they can be hosted by Compass Mining. Compass Mining is not affiliated with me. They have no clue I'm even recording this. From the Compass website, if I scroll down, I can see that on average, these S19 XPs are generating $10 to $11 in today's terms. Zoom out to the three-year chart and you can see what this mining revenue looks like over time. As the price of Bitcoin goes up, the value of the sats that these miners are earning for producing blocks goes up with it and down with it as well. And interestingly, the cost of the miners themselves are reflective of that too. When the value of Bitcoin is high, miners are expensive. When the value of Bitcoin is low, miners are relatively cheap. So that's Bitcoin. Now we're going to talk about Solana next. So now I'm focused in on Solana and if I try and generate a swap real quick, Swapping a small amount of USDC to a small amount of SOL, I see that it does generate a network fee. And right here, that network fee is 0 0.000001 SOL. That's five zeros and then one SOL. It's not uncommon at all to see transaction fees on SOL in the range of 0 0.12345 five soul to one soul, or maybe even going up as high as uh, the four zeros and then 10 uh, soul right here. These are actually known as LAM ports. If Bitcoin had sats, soul has LAM ports. And if I'm spying on this one right here, that's five zeros and then the five, that is 5,000 LAM ports. Roughly one billion LAM ports equals one soul. Now, if you've been on Sol for the last two years, you may have stumbled across this word land ports, but you've never talked about your fee in terms of land ports. Why is that the typical degen? Because quite frankly, Sol fees are so small that they're not noticeable. They're fractions of a penny and also they're fixed. Variable fees would catch our attention. We would want to know when fees are going up or down, but for the most part, they're fixed. Now, since then, Sol has introduced something called fee markets, where we can actually pay more. We can pay above the standard transaction fee to get more attention to it, but many applications have not implemented it. Still, the question remains, what happened to this Sol fee, this transaction fee that I just paid? Next video. Remember in the last video where I introduced the concept of slots? A slot was a chance for a validator to create a block on the blockchain. Now, why does the validator really care about that? Well, because within the block are all of the transactions that it needs to process. There could be 1,000, 2,000 transactions in that block. And part of that transaction were those transaction fees. The validator gets half of all transaction fees 
that were contained within the block. The other half of those transaction fees burned right there on the spot. So validators love being on the leader schedule because it gives them slots, which are opportunities to create blocks, which are opportunities to get half of all of the transaction fees in those blocks. Now, why is that such a big deal? Well, here comes a slot right here. Let's call it slot number one. If my validator creates this block, they basically create the block and then they propose this block to all of the other validators on the Solana blockchain. Those validators then vote on whether or not they agree that that's a good block. Once most of those votes have been tallied and it is confirmed that this is a good block, that's when the validator collects its payment and burns the rest. Here's the real kicker. The votes themselves that validators are voting on, those also cost a transaction fee. Wait, there's one more zero right there. With slot times of about 450 milliseconds, that means that a typical Solana validator is sending out a transaction fee at least two times per second, sometimes three times per second. Dig a little bit deeper in the next video. If you are a validator, a small validator that's not producing a lot of blocks, this is what your balance looks like right here, this chart. See, it's steadily going down as you burn these transaction fees just paying to vote. See this little bump right here? That was when they just created a block. So the goal for a lot of validators is to attract a huge amount of stake to their validator such that they produce so many blocks that it stops this downward trend of paying to vote on transactions. We'll take a look at Juicy Stake's chart now. Juicy Stake at the time of this recording has just about 712,000 souls staked on it. As more soul gets staked on my validator, I get more opportunities or leader slots to produce blocks on the blockchain. That's how this works. The more stake you have, that's basically signaling to Solana that you are a trustworthy validator and should be trusted to create more blocks on the blockchain. So with 712,000 soul staked on my validator, let's see what my return is for producing blocks. Well, sure enough, my trend is mostly upward at this point, but we're looking at a six hour chart right here. And during the time that six hours has elapsed, I went from roughly 14.37 soul to 14.49 soul. So in a six hour period, I gained 0.12 soul. If we extrapolate that out times a whole day, I'm gonna earn about half a soul a day running this validator and maintaining a level of 700,000 plus soul staked on the node. So this breaks down what happens to your transaction fee whenever you pay on Solana. Now we'll take a look at an interesting one and that's the up and coming blockchain suite. Shifting gears to SWE, take a look here in a second. I just staked one SWE on SWE's testnet to the Juicy Stake Validator. Like I announced yesterday, we are honored to be one of the roughly 90 validators selected out of all of the applicants in the world to be a testnet validator for SWE. I see here that I have gas fees in play. Let's view the breakdown of those gas fees on the testnet explorer. When you scroll down to the bottom of Sui's Explorer, you see this total gas fee line right here, but you can actually expand it to see the breakdown of how this Sui gas fee was created. Gas fees in Sui are measured in mist. Mist is something that you're gonna wanna get comfortable seeing if you plan on working with Sui. Just like Lampert's were to Seoul, one billion mist equals one Sui. Gotta spell that correctly though. The gas calculation itself is broken down in three pieces. The, re the reference gas price right here of 1,000 mist, this is set by the validators every single day. The computation fee makes up the bulk of your fee, which pays for the processing overhead to actually process your transaction. And then lastly is the storage fee. So this still leaves the question of who gets the fee? Well, in the next video, we're gonna break it down and trust me, it's gonna be worth your wait. 
So here's how I'm gonna look at how the gas fees are handled here. If I group the gas price and computation fee together, we're looking at roughly 1 million, 1,000 mist in play here. If I group the storage fee and storage rebate together and I do a little bit of rounding, we're looking at roughly 18,000 mist in play here. This is where it gets really fascinating. This gas chunk right here is primarily, are you ready for this? going to be given to the stakers. That's right, anyone out there who is staking their SWE are going to collect income from that stake SWE in a couple different ways. The first is they're going to get stake subsidies. This is like you're used to doing on any other proof of stake blockchain, where the protocol emits a certain amount of SWE to reward the people for staking. This is just like in Solana. How will we stake our soul? The Solana protocol itself emits a little bit of soul every single epoch and then distributes that based on the weight of the staking account compared to the rest of the world's stake. Just like in Solana, over time, the amount that is emitted over time is going to trend towards zero. So the amount that you're going to receive from stake subsidies should decrease as the years progress, although not very rapidly. But what gets really interesting is, on top of the stake subsidies that you typically get from proof-of-stake blockchains, this chunk of the gas fees themselves are collected into a giant pool, and at the end of the epoch, those are also sent out based on the amount of stake that you have contributed to the rest of the world. That's right. So it's particularly fascinating that if we see the blockchain becomes under congestion at some point and gas fees start to go up, the people who are staking their SWE are actually going to be the ones who reap the rewards from it. Now, what's the storage fee all about? This is payment to the validators. At a high level, the validators are going to get that reward. So this has been Breaking Down SWE.